So all this is going to be quite light. All that area. Then it goes into the blue. You can use uh, these charcoal, charcoal ones as well, General's White. I find them quite good. They can actually be a bit whiter and brighter than the pastels. Make a bit of a different noise on the paper. So that's going to help with that lighting effect there. It's going to be light over here as well. I might as well just indicate where it's going to be. I remember I said it was very light there also. Because that comes down like that. This is more of a grey. The beaks on birds, especially birds of prey like this, they very often have these kind of translucent areas where you can, you think you're almost seeing through it. Like that. Looks white, but it looks like you would almost see them through. Same there. And it's going to be the same there as well, with a touch of blue or purple. See that? Kind of not far off the colour. A little bit of blue on it. Down underneath here, we've got the shape of the beak. It's coming around there, I've almost lost the edge. Down like that. It goes up there, it's not going to be that blue for long. Around there. And it goes up there with a bright white line. And we've got this beak coming here. That's quite blue. This is really blue. So that's the obviously the light above really shining down on the beak. It's giving us that very blue effect. I'll end up going a touch lighter on that as well. Over here it'll go a little darker. So if you can do a click in, I've got pencils in my hand and I'm trying not to click click them. I don't want to be making too much extra funny noises. But you can see very often I've got the pencils that I'm using frequently in my hand. It just means I don't have to go looking for them all the time. And this is where I will use a paper stump. So I want to keep this blended. There's no grain. You can see there's not going to be any grain there. It's just like can look weird if you've got graininess on the paper very similar to when I see um, pastels or paints and it's uh, perhaps a clouds landscape so you're looking at the sky and it's clouds and you know you're not going to have grain in there you're not going to have that texture in there so it looks strange when you then see that in a drawing or painting And it's similar here. We know this is going to be 
shiny grain free area so I'm just putting some of that light there it's helping to make that work a little bit of this blue here as well I'm gonna put some purple on there too in a second that is coming along quite well let's see if I've got something oh yeah there we go that's a nice purple this is one of the only Caran d'Ache pencils I use fairly frequently so it's 788 631 most of you will know Caran d'Ache are not my favorite pencils at all which is just as well because they're so expensive but there's a few colors in there that you really don't get anywhere else in any of the other sets and that's one of them I think I'll put a bit up here as well I can see a bit of that purple will live in there too definitely in the end just might as well do the side of the tongue while I've got that pencil in my hand more of the creamy color there got to be careful because I can fall into these habits just like other people and all of a sudden you put in the pencil that you've got in your hand just anyway and it, you know that color doesn't really exist there so be careful you're not just being a bit lazy really Up in there we've got kind of a dirty green so let's leave that for now. Drawing what I'm seeing. for a different blue. I'm seeing quite a bit of purple. Well, let's, let's see what we've got here in my set in a second. not too far off 149 that was definitely needs to go darker there needs to be darker on the tip detail will go on top so I'm going to think about that too much
Okay, that's that's coming okay. So this needs to definitely be lighter. So that's the white, and I can see it needs to go and have some of this blue in there as well. And then it kind of curls around. So I'm picking out a few of the highlights that we see in there that's making it look glossy, shiny, wet looking. Right, let's reassess that now. How's it going? What do I need around here? A bit more of this dark, I think. I can push quite hard with that pencil. That creates that edge that I need. And then go super soft with it. Blend that a little. darker up here as well and then that green or grey let's see what a grey would could be a grey with a bit of orange perhaps yeah that looks okay may come back to that later I'll also tidy this edge up on the bottom beak later as well Right, shall I put some highlights on there now? Probably not, but I'm going to do a couple anyway. And this edge there is going to really help that tip of the beak stand out from the background then it can kind of almost disappear like a lost line there Then it comes back around a few dots and dashes
think I'll put this dark in because that's going to help that beak stand out. Even at this early stage, I like I like to put areas in that I know will you know will look quite three-dimensional. Just by putting that dark in, I knew that would bring that light forward. I worried about the rest of it. And this dark end this year would do the same thing. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good so far. Hope you've enjoyed this short section out of my three and a half hour Kestrel lesson video on Patreon. Remember you get access to literally hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of videos on there. So you can learn how to use your pastel pencils, pan pastels and much more. Hope to see you there real soon.